with the playing tournament officially coming to a conclusion, last video, I talked about exactly what the NBA season has taught us so far. But of course, that's not the end. We still have disappointments to definitely touch on, surprises to talk about, trades that's been historically great, and much more. So shout out to everyone asking for this part two. And most importantly, look out for my playoff prediction video early tomorrow morning, right before the playoffs kicks off. It's, it's going to be uh, some work that we have to do uh, because you just take a look at what the lineups could potentially look like. You put another big next to Ben, then you got to figure out what the spacing is around him. Then if you put a playmaker next to him, then you got to figure out what Ben looks like without the basketball. Then if you go small without with Ben, then you got to figure out, can you rebound enough with him? All right, so the challenges are ahead of us. We'll look them head on. We'll figure it out. We have the personnel to figure it out. Whether it is me mixing and matching throughout different pieces of the game uh, and allowing him to have a group and run with a group, uh, that part we'll figure out, but you see the challenges that lie ahead. I hinted at this topic at the end of last video, but Ben Simmons is probably on the worst contract in basketball. Last year, we all know the story. The 76ers basically hurt his feelings going back to the 2021 playoffs where he completely folded, and he was actually sensitive enough to hold that grudge going into the following season. Even with that being a situation and him being completely unprofessional, I still thought that man got absolutely blessed going back to last year's deadline. Ben Simmons wanted up in a place that on paper looked like the most ideal fit possible. Brooklyn desperately needed a versatile defender to put on players like Giannis, Kawhi, LeBron, etc. And he was supposed to fit that role. Also, they could use Ben on fast breaks for easy instant offense. And with the space in Brooklyn had, the fit should have been as seamless as possible. But as we know, this season is... It's been a complete mess for Ben Simmons. Jock Vaughn essentially called this man unplayable in that clip in which he really is. And with the players they have that truly bring value, not trying to force his value, the only justifiable reason you would really have to play Ben Simmons is because he's on a big contract. I know Ben is probably not healthy. He's reportedly had injuries, mental hurdles, all that. But this man has basically regressed in everything. I'm not even going to waste too much time on Ben because at this point, he's really irrelevant. But this season proved Ben Simmons, given the flash early potential that we've seen, is possibly the most disappointing first pick in NBA history. But Zion Williamson may actually have an argument for that last statement. Although Zion's struggles haven't been as self-inflicted as I believe Ben's has, He's proven that he's never going to be that life-changing, franchise-altering, reliable first option that he was drafted to be. This season, this man has basically only played a third of the season. And like I said in a recent video, when he's played, he's been incredible. You can just see how dominant and ferocious he is, only at 6'6", first in points in the paint, even going back to his rookie year. He's always top two in that category. When he was actually there, which is always a flash in the pan, the Pelicans were a top seed in the West, and they had the second best offense in the league when Zion was on the floor. And to me, and I said this in my Zion video, what makes him so damn frustrating is how good of a team the Pelicans are even in his absence. After Zion got hurt earlier in this season, it looked like the Pelicans' season, aspirations, championship hopes, all of that had literally collapsed. In fact, from the time he got hurt all the way up until February, they had one of the worst records in the NBA, only beside teams that's tanking. Most of that was without Zion, Ingram, and Alvarado, so that was just a very rough patch in their season. But since March, where they began to get healthy, they've had one of the best records in the West, three players averaging an efficient 20 a night, most notably Trey Murphy. He's become like a mini star in Zion's absence. They've had the second best defense in the league, first in the West. They finished two games above 500, and oh yeah, they made the play in. All this set the stage for at least a possible return of Zion, but reportedly, although he feels physically fine, mentally he's not there, so he, he can't compete with his team. I don't know how long they can keep doing this. This is year four, and this man is literally a liability. The Kings Pacers trade was most definitely a win-win. I'm not going to talk about the King side of it because I've touched on that enough and we know Sabonis obviously transformed that team. They're the third seed. But I want to talk about Tyrese Halliburton. Since putting on a Pacers jersey, Tyrese is averaging the second most assist a night, only at 22 years old. 
he quietly just became the first player ever to average 20 and 10 a night shooting 40 percent from deep and guess what he's most definitely the new point guard even with him averaging the second most assists per game this year he's 43rd in turnovers a night top 10 in assist to turnover ratio and if this season isn't impressive enough okay let's look at it from a historic point of view since the merger these are all the players that average 20 and 10 in a season Tyrese is averaging the least amount of turnovers alongside the original point guard and he's shooting the most efficiently he probably just had the most efficient 20 and 10 season in modern NBA history Jimmy Butler's prom it's been disgustingly sabotaged in Miami I, I'm sorry I keep hearing analysts talk about Miami and how scary they are but can we please stop acting like they're this big bad scary team that nobody wants to face because they're not like they're just not in reality, they're a bunch of overachievers that's bought into a very good culture. I truly believe that. Okay, last year, they made the Eastern Conference Finals. But how exactly did they make it? Jimmy Butler had to have the most 40-point games out of anybody in the entire playoffs. Look at the other two players that also had more than one 40-point game. Two players that didn't have enough collective offensive help last playoffs, just like Jimmy Butler last playoffs and this year. This season, Miami basically ran it back with those nasty contracts that they're not going to be able to get rid of, and their offense is laughably bad as a result. Jimmy Butler just quietly had probably the best season of his career. Top 10 in damn near every advanced metric, top 2 in steals. Miami has a top 10 offense when he's on the floor, one of the worst when he's off. He's one of the highest offensive rating players individually in the NBA. And guess what? It's meant absolutely nothing, collectively. They score the least amount of points tonight. They're one of the worst teams from the field, one of the worst teams from deep. They're small, so they get killed on the glass. They're small, so they can't block shots. They're old, so they play at an extremely slow pace. They're old, so they don't score in transition and get easy buckets. They play a half-court style, yet they don't have reliable half-court offensive players outside of Jimmy Butler. Like, it's a miracle that they're this good. Next year, they have all this money tied into this extremely mid-core. That's nasty, and that's just wasting Jimmy Butler's prom. The Clippers, who I don't see winning a championship this year, they messed up four years ago. Now, honestly, not really because the trade made sense at that time, still kind of does, and hindsight is always 2020. But to lose all of this for possibly another early playoff exit is just sad. This season, SGA has the most 30 point games out of everybody even though he's not averaging the most points or he doesn't have the most total points he has the most 30 point games he's one of the youngest players since the 2000s to ever average 30 and simply I believe he's a better basketball player at this point than Paul George ever was with all due respect I know it's not all Shea because they've drafted pretty well with players like Josh Giddy, who's developed Jalen Williams who made a real run at rookie of the year but this season look at the top five youngest teams in the league and then look at their record and then look at OKC's record they're not supposed to be here just for comparison's sakes look at the top five oldest teams in the NBA this is typically how the NBA works OKC this year they're 16 and a half games over their projected preseason odds that's the most out of any team this season again that's the effect this man's development has truly had on that franchise Clippers fans, I still respect and understand the move, but OKC four years later, they definitely came out better. And lastly, and I'll keep this brief because I'm honestly burned out from Dallas. The Mavericks, they're a joke of a franchise right now. From the Jalen Brunson contract they missed out on to Mark Cuban disgracefully blaming this man's family, continuing to push future free agents away from that organization from them continuing to bless the Knicks for some odd reason. Bless them with Tyson Chandler basically a decade ago, basically blessed them with Jalen Brunson last year, possibly your first round pick this year for a player you no longer have, to them quitting on the season while they still had a shot. Playing Luka in the first quarter, hurting his averages, I don't understand why you would do that. Desperately gambling on Kyrie just for it to be a disaster and he might not return to six years ago they drafted Dennis Smith Jr. over Donovan Mitchell and then traded him in that package for Bazingis which is the package in which the Knicks can possibly get their first round pick this year like when I look at their last decade I don't know if they've done anything right outside of land Luka and land Jalen Brunson in which they didn't believe in that organization is a disaster um if you guys like this video like this video if you made it this far comment your MVP mine is Joel Embiid and 
I want to hear yours. Stay tuned tomorrow morning for my playoff predictions. I'm dropping that. Uh, follow my social media sites. Turn on post notifications. Do all that great stuff, guys. And until next time, as always.